Welcome to Jaden's Adventures. Established back in the day by old Ben Franklin. First place in the country at the time that was minting points for our use. Coming along, we have a great view of Ben Franklin Bridge ahead of us. Yes, we do have one of everything named after him, I swear. It's only fair since he was involved in so, 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 so many things. We have the Fireman's Hall Museum, started by Franklin. So uh, we're going to learn about the history of firefighting in our nation. Betsy Ross, of course, the woman who made the first flag of our country. Bust of Ben Franklin. You know, it's a strange texture to that. It's made of donated keys and pennies. Franklin's grave is coming up on the left. That'll be at the corner, and they want to see it through the fencing. We have the Constitution Center place. You can learn about that foundational document of our nation. Chinatown Friendship Gates. Freestanding structure. That means there's nothing holding that up except craftsmanship. And it's the size of three football fields. Right now serving as one of the primary vaccination centers in our town. We've got actually all four combat service branches of the military serving in here. The Reading Terminal Market. They've got some 30 odd restaurants and shops throughout. The first place you could get ice cream in the United States. The Hard Rock Cafe that's spinning around to face us is of course, the second largest Gibson guitar on the face of the earth. Where's the largest, you ask? Oh, well, where else would it be? It's in Dubai. Naturally. Coming around to one of the two great artery roads of our fair city, Market Street. We've got a great view dead ahead of us of City Hall. Made notable, of course, of its statues is the one right at the very top, Mr. William Penn himself at the top of the tower, the Wanamaker building, the site of the first ever proper department store in the United States history. The city Hall was built and designed well before the invention of central air. And as much as they'd love to convert it over, you can't run venting through solid stone. As such, you can imagine the power bill in the summer. But as a trade-off, it is an absolutely magnificent building all throughout. And it is, in fact, still the functioning center of the city government. So close to the Masonic Temple. Yes, the meeting house of the Freemasons. Yes, that's secret society. They do have a presence in town. They our founding fathers were, in fact, part of that brotherhood. Of course, the little park statue to our right. It's very small. The lovely flags lining both sides. They are, of course, mostly in alphabetical order. With a few exceptions, the Cathedral Basilica of St. Peter and Paul, the church of the Philadelphia area for the Catholic faith. Lovely green copper dome. Its presence is why we have the Vatican and Italy flags here out of alphabetical order. That is Thaddeus Kosciuszko. He is a Polish national hero. He also helped save our revolution. Fun fact, the smallest national park in America. Coming around lovely Logan Circle, it's one of the five square parks William Penn rode into his original plans for the city. On the right of the bus as we come around, if you can tear your eyes away from that beautiful sight, on the right we have the central branch of the Free Library of Philadelphia, which was a institution started by Ben Franklin. As we go, folks, as we go, do watch your heads along here. There are a few tree branches to watch out for, depending on how we have to navigate the lanes. first building in well, the United States designed by a female architect, a local woman. The architect was a very avid indoor gardener. She designed the building so that every room gets equal light throughout the day. For gardening purposes, of course. Watch your heads as we go, folks. Some of the lower Whoa. trees on the ground. The Sixth Sense was filmed at this location. Director M. Night Shyamalan is from just outside of Philadelphia. He likes to film in the area. The Eastern State Penitentiary. It's not a jail. It's not a prison. Each inmate is locked in their own cell by themselves for 23 hours a day. 
exactly three objects to occupy their time. One Bible to read, one cot to sleep on, and one hole in the ceiling to let the light in, which they called the Eye of God. Joan of Arc, Maid of Orleans. No, it's not real cold. Rocky Balboa! He is supposed to be on the top of the steps, but the museum never liked him at the top of the steps. Egan's Oval, folks. Lovely spot. This is actually where most of our parades wind up ending at. Philadelphia. The Franklin Institute stands a 20-foot tall statue of the human heart, through which you walk, following the path of your own blood. Over and under, through and around you go, following its chambers and ventricles, look up and look up some more you'll see the last structure of Comcast 2. It's supposed to be shaped like a cell phone but it's antenna up. About to turn onto Market Street once again one of the two great arteries of town. Stop 18 right here here folks. On the right we've got another much beloved Philadelphia institution. Wawa. It's a convenience store. It's like 7-Eleven but you know not sketchy. But you might wonder what's up with that name? And what's up with that logo? Well, the logo is, of course, a goose. A Canada goose. We'll go on the left between these two buildings. You'll see Comcast 1. I think it's supposed to look like a thumb drive. Our city hall was, in fact, the tallest building in town. We were very proud of it. There was a long-standing gentleman's agreement that nothing would be built taller than the brim of the hat on founder William Penn's statue at the top of that city structure. Eventually, we got tired of New York acting all uppity, and we too joined the skyscraper age. The Union League of Philadelphia was uh, built to try and preserve the Union back in the 1860s. You can guess what event that was about, it, and you can tell it didn't work. We're coming down on the Avenue of the Arts, folks. A lot of performing arts facilities. Academy of Music, where you go to see, or hear, orchestral and other instrumental pieces. Next to that, the Merriam, no relation to Webster. That's where small-scale live performance goes. Things stop and whatnot. On the left, this purple thing. The Wilma, that is where the avant-garde independent works go. Back on the right, we have the Kibble Center, where you have Broadway and other such performances. Also, that's where the, well, the rock stars go that don't want to use the stadiums. The University of the Arts, where you can train to perform or work at any of these facilities or similar. It actually used to be a school for the blind. Pride flags on the street signs. It's all very nice. On the left of the bus, folks, the Pennsylvania Hospital. If you look at the top of the central building, you'll see a little white thing, round. That's a skylight. You can get free surgery here back in the colonial era, but only between 10 and 2 on a clear day. As a matter of fact, you even got your own choice of three different methods of anesthesia for your free surgery. Coming along through the area of town we call Society Hill. Society Hill, some of the oldest homes in town the most expensive homes in town. On the right, we've got this graveyard. You'll see a lot of colonial flags. Not today, all days, you see a lot of flags in the graveyards, but these are always here because they're marking the spots where people who fought in the revolution died and were buried. Gotta keep those bushes watered, right? Uh, speaking of most expensive homes in town, on the left, this row of homes, the last one in the row, folks, take a look at it. It has the thinnest house in Philadelphia. It's about the width of this bus. Last time I checked, that house had a six-digit asking price. The Mosulu, that used to be a full proper sailing ship, now it is a full proper seafood restaurant. You can literally get your seafood on the river. Harbor Park's a bit busy today, but it's generally a really great place to hang out at the end of the day if you're on the waterfront. 
also the site of, very subtle, statue to Christopher Columbus. Erected back in 1992, when we were coming up on the 500 year anniversary. This is where we have all of our fireworks as well in town. New Year's, 4th of July. There's already a small settlement called Swedes nearby. They were folded into his colony when he first no, no. arrived no, no. to establish it. In fact, their presence stretched on the other great artery of town, Market Street. Scaffolding, folks, is the United States Post Office of one Mr. Ben Franklin. There's also the site of his house. Ben Franklin, why did he have a post office at his house? Cleanest public bathrooms in Philadelphia. Also some other stuff, probably, I guess, but that's the big one. Naturally, of course, uh, they do close at 6. Take advantage while you get the chance. Uh, this building on the left, or half the building, I should say, is what they call the Presidential Ghost House. It's a uh, partial reconstruction of uh, the Liberty Bell, as we said at the beginning of the tour. The Independence Hall, technically three buildings in order, which later converted over to the three branches of government once we established the United States government. Nowadays, they've completely ceased function in any legislative governmental capacity and are fully and completely a historic site. Lovely stuff. Can go through, see how they work, see how they operate. Well, we're coming back around, folks, to the end of the tour. We end where we began. Stop number one once again. The Bourse Building. That's this orange thing to the side of us. See you next time!